I'd like to take this opportunity as we begin annually the reading of the Torah to speak to you about one of the most fascinating individuals of not only all of Jewish history, but I believe all of history. He was someone who was one of the most interesting individuals that ever lived. I would refer to him as the first modern Bible scholar. Not the father of modern Bible scholarship, but the first modern Bible scholar. A distinction that I will make clear in just a few moments. He lived in 17th century Amsterdam, and his name was Baruch, or Benedict, Spinoza. Spinoza, as I mentioned, a fascinating character, came from a family of Moranos, of secret Jews, who left Portugal during the expulsion of the Jews in 1497. His family moved to Amsterdam. Amsterdam, then as now, a relatively liberal city. Spinoza was born in 1532, a brilliant young man who, with a small group of non-Jewish friends, formed a group of what we call free thinkers. At the very young age of 24, Spinoza was excommunicated by the chief rabbinate of Amsterdam, an excommunication that remains in effect today, hundreds of years after his death, even though People such as David Ben-Gurion had requested of the chief rabbinate of Amsterdam the rescission of Spinoza's excommunication. He was graciously refused. And again, you'll understand why within the next few minutes. Spinoza published a number of volumes during his lifetime, several anonymously, for again, reasons that will become clear in just a few moments. Two works I'd like to discuss briefly. One called the Theological Political Treatise, his work on scripture, hence the connection with our beginning of the reading of the Torah, and the second, his ethics, his philosophical work. It's interesting that if we peruse volumes on great Jewish thinkers, the odds are about 50-50 that Spinoza would be included or excluded totally because many, many individuals do not consider him a Jewish thinker, and yet others, myself included, consider him a seminal and original, if heretical, Jewish thinker. Let's go back to his work. His theological treatise posits very clearly in language that smacks of contemporary times the idea that Moses was not the sole author of the entire Torah. Something which today is a fundamental truth of all academic biblical scholarship, but in the 17th century was downright heresy. And Spinoza was an equal opportunity offender. He offended not only his own Jewish community, but the Christian community as well, by his views that there was not a single author of the five books, but rather multiple authors. And he cites in very, very logical sequence, reason after reason after reason, why Moses could not have been the author of the Torah. That alone would have qualified Spinoza for excommunication, but that's only the beginning of his heresy. In his theological work, again exemplified by the ethics, Spinoza denies the existence of a divine God, an entity, and equates God with nature. Essentially, Spinoza and his friends had no use for religion of any kind, be it Judaism or Christianity. He felt that people of goodwill, of all traditions, could make the world a better place. 
And he essentially felt that religion had out outlived its usefulness. Again, we're talking about the 17th century, not the 20th century or the 21st century. So Spinoza both denied the Mosaic authorship of the Torah on the one hand and the divine entity of God on the other. You can see, I think, very clearly from these views why an Orthodox rabbinate not only would have excommunicated him in 1656, again at the ripe young age of 24, but why even today, hundreds of years later, an Orthodox rabbinate refuses to rescind his communication. Again, one of the most fascinating individuals of all time, I refer to him as the first modern biblical scholar and not the father of modern biblical scholarship precisely because he lived before his time and he had no students. Unlike someone who lived several hundred years later who might be called the father of modern biblical scholarship who trained students to follow in his footsteps, Spinoza was unique, one of a kind, living before his own time and hence someone who I would call the first modern Bible scholar rather than the father of modern biblical scholarship. Again, a fascinating individual and one of the most interesting and controversial figures who ever lived, Jewish or non-Jewish, Benedict or Baruch Spinoza.